it's just the, the draft setting so what I'm gonna do actually is maybe we'll go back to the history and I'll show you I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go down here we're gonna do it again filter blur radial blur I'm gonna go to good for example go it again and it will take longer There, much better or getting close anyway so I'll move that over there so I'm just gonna scoot this down a bit let me get this over here for now keyboard viewer so now we got it rocks that's pretty good so we're gonna say move this down and of course you can move this layer wherever you want it's totally up to you you can go Apple T you can transform this layer however you want notice that I am shifting different key commands different key commands give me different options to shift and shape this particular layer okay totally up to you up to what you want to do so I'm just gonna squish this in a bit because I do want to match as much as I can you know, the edges I want to match everything down through here and when I move it down of course things are gonna change so I'm gonna go okay it rocks, bum bum bum, right? So now what I'd like to do, possibly, is maybe we can move this ahead. It really, really depends. I can go in and I can change this to a screen. I can change this to a hard light, which kind of looks cooler because it does beef this up a bit. Okay, I can go into here. All right, now we're gonna get into really kind of hardcore stuff. Um, the color dodge and burn. This stuff here is permanent, so I can't like undo it. It's it's done right on the actual layer. Uh, the color dodge and the color burn are items that um, are throwbacks from you know old airbrushing, old you know exposure days of basically the dodge tool. It kind of looks like a lollipop. That's actually a supposed to be kind of like a a, a, a paper circle if you will uh, on a stick and when you're making a um, an exposure with a camera you know you're projecting light down on an image on a photographic paper you would hold this um, little little basically paper circle in front of the light and you would cast a shadow on the uh, on, on the photographic paper okay and the result is that you would be underexposing everything that 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 shadow fell on okay and when I say underexposed I mean you'd be making things brighter and that's exactly what I can do here I can go in and paint with this dodge tool and make things brighter but you'll notice that it only affects for example the highlights or I can select the midtones or the shadows and I can select the exposure I can select whatever I want I can select a different brush it's totally your call but it's permanent like once you do that on that layer it's done so usually what I do is I make a duplicate you know, I always make doubles of everything just in case. So I'm going to go in here. Oops, got a little too hard. I'm going to go in here and we're going to take this uh, dodge tool. I'll tell you the truth, I'm looking for a tool called Drippy Water. Mm, I got lots of brushes here. I'm trying to find one that will work. Brush presets. We're going to go to, let's see, small list. There we go. Splatter, Chark, if you see one called Drippy Water, shout it out. There we go, thank you very much. Drippy Water is nice because it gives a nice organic feel. And I'm going to make this larger. And I'm going to go in with my highlight tool. And I'm going to slowly bring this down. Slowly go in. So my drippy water, I have, I'm going to have to modify this a bit. So I can go into shape dynamics and I can basically tell it, you know, how big this is, right? I can say, you know, there's different sizes, the roundness, jitter. I can modify anything that, that goes on inside this brush via the brush tip shape, the shape dynamics, all kinds of stuff. So I'm actually going to, that's pretty good as it is, I think. I think that's not bad. Um, scattering and control how far apart these brushes go so if I was to hit this and I'll go you know the actual brush scatters across so far you can barely see it um, the count so we're gonna bring this down a bit just like so okay so now we're gonna close that up 
I'm just going to go in. I'm going to increase just so it's visible. There we go. I'm going to add just a little bit of, of messiness to this. That's only affecting the highlights. This is permanent. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. You're gonna be like, dude, why are you putting yellow junk all over your your green? And I'll give me a second, I'll show you. It's what we call specular highlights. And basically this is the foundation for sparkle and shine. And I'm just kind of arbitrarily throwing it. Notice I'm throwing it on the curves. I am throwing it up in top over here. Just giving things a little bit more pop. Okay, and I probably would have spent more time. I'm just doing this quick. This, this tutorial is going quite long. But there's a lot of information to cover, so what the heck, eh? So, now I got my specular highlights. Now, I'm going to go make a new layer inside and I'm going to again go in and I'm going to go to my brush brush presets and I'm going to get I want that nice highlight color if I can find it here hmm, where'd she go? star? that's it, it's pretty good star will work so if I go in and select possibly this yellow color, okay, on my new layer, my brush, star 70, I'm going to hit the airbrush option. When this airbrush option is held as on, that means that when I click and, and hold on this, it will intensify and keep going. Whereas if I keep this off, when I hit on it once, it just puts on the, op the opacity. When this airbrush thing is turned on, it starts at the opacity setting and goes till I it hits 100%. So just a little tip there. So I'm gonna actually go in and I'm gonna make this huge just for right now, and I'm gonna go pow. Oh yeah, that's maybe not what I'm looking for. I'm gonna make this 100% and turn that off. Okay, I'm just gonna go in and add bits and pieces here. And too much of this is a bad thing. And I'm just showing you different different ways to do it. Okay, now again you can turn this off and on. Okay. You can apply a multiply to it, you can apply a color dodge to it, hard light. That's my channels, get back in their channels, etc. etc. <coughs> right, so now we have it rocks. Now we got this super cool title. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to save this. This is the Photoshop file still, mind you. Okay, taking a while to save because now we have extra stuff in here. Now again, we're going to go save as, save as EPS. Okay, proof setup down here. We're going to save it in the same spot. We're going to go save, and of course, this is your old one. Yeah, you want to replace it. Um, unless, of course, you're doing different variations on a theme and you want to show your client a whole bunch of different versions, then you would be saving this. And, for example, you would save it differently, like my ad 2 and my ad 3. But because we want this to be replaced, we're going to save it exactly as it was. Okay, keep everything the same. Okay, now it's done saving. I'm gonna go back to Illustrator. Hey, look at that. This is why we link stuff. It automatically updates for us, doesn't it? So we're gonna go hit yes. Pow, done. So now I'm gonna take my my master vector, move that over to the side. I'm just gonna color that black so I can see what's going on. Looking better, huh? Now, now that we have this color treatment in the type, 